Hello and welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, it's National Coffee Day. I didn't know that, so we're making a little bit of an impromptu content, but um, come along. I'm just here for a little coffee break, but it's not just any coffee break. I've been slowly testing and trying to formulate um, a signature blend that I wanted to make for espresso. And I've been thinking about this for a long time. Even one of you guys who've been watching um, also recommended me to do that. And I was like, yes, I'm, I'm thinking about that. And I really didn't have an idea um, or a starting place at how to go about even developing a signature blend and, and things like that and why and, and all that stuff. But, you know, it's been slowly kind of coming together. The time that I can spend with Black City Coffee um, and kind of dabble and experiment and just kind of like waste time dialing in my machine and throwing away and, and effectively wasting some coffee grounds, um, some coffee beans, but it's all been in really good fun. I would say in still the early stages of developing this blend, but it's exciting because I've kind of been neglecting this for a little bit, just kind of relishing in black coffee every morning and every coffee break, but lately, that I've been kind of like yearning for summer to end and fall to start. I'm kind of yearning for something sweeter, creamier. Um, I think back to the days when um, I would have a little bit of like um, uh, butter in my coffee and some coconut oil and that whole bit when the whole bulletproof coffee craze came out and I thought that was really tasty and I was just kind of yearning for that flavor. So. Um, I started to kind of like dust this guy off because I've been seriously neglecting it uh, and started to once again develop and, and get into espresso again. And this is just the Breville Barista Express. Um, so nothing too fancy. And I think, I think this is actually a good um, starting point, I think, for, for somebody like a, like a potential customer of Black City Coffee. And I was thinking, well, you know, it, you know, it was recommended to me like that this this machine is not the best, obviously, but I mean, for the price point, um, it's still quite an expensive machine for the average coffee drinker at home. Uh, and I don't really like to go to cafes. It's really not my jam. I don't really do that stuff. Um, I love being at home. I'm a total homebody. I love to have con total control over everything, even though, um, as it may be judged, it won't be like award winning or things like that. But the fact that it's mine and I and I had a handle on every single step of the process, to me, it makes that a 100% in my book. I've got my little experimental blend in here. I'm not gonna say what it is, uh, not for like, oh, cause I think people are gonna steal or anything like that. Just because I think it's inconsequential. I'm at that point where it's just so early in the game where I'm not married to this blend um, but we'll see. I'm definitely sticking to something um, on the full city row side and um, a darker row side because I, I want to be able to uh, extract this coffee well, you know, with this machine that is not the best. <laughs> yeah, I've been also practicing stretching and, and uh, just kind of stretching milk. I'm really terrible at it, but hey, I mean, it tastes good. Uh, you know what? Actually, with the milk, I forgot that I ran out today, so we're actually not doing that today. So we're just going to have a little bit of espresso and see how that goes. And it took me literally 12 times or 11 times to get this thing dialed in, which... <laughs> I started to um, watch a bunch of YouTube videos on like how I can maximize this machine more. And I'm definitely interested in getting like a bottomless portafilter uh, made for this machine, um, like a doser and a, and a funnel and all kinds of stuff like that. But they are quite expensive for such little tools. I understand why and all that stuff, but um, I think I'm gonna take my time on it. And because I'm not, I don't drink espresso drinks that often. 
I'm kind of like also not really motivated to go get it, you know? So we'll just see. We'll just see how that goes. Okay, I just want to time it also. So I don't have that here. Hold on. Let's measure how, how much uh, yield I get. Just, just curious, I never did this before. Okay. I did preheat the machine about 10 minutes, so maybe I could have preheated a little longer. Maybe lost a little pressure, a little fast. I think it's going to be a little sour. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're at 21 seconds. Yeah, so a bit fast. So I'll need to again, <laughs> again adjust adjust what I've got going on here. But let's see how much yield I got. Uh, 59. So yeah, definitely it's going to be quite underdeveloped. Yeah, a little sour. Not terrible. There's there's another reason why I don't like going to cafes is that a lot of times when I do order an espresso in a cafe because I'm like, oh, please, barista, show me how it's done. Um, I get really sour shots um, or even bitter shots. And I, it's been really rare that I've gotten a really good, I forgot to kind of mix this up, a good, um, a good es uh, espresso. Yeah, definitely. So I'm getting sour. It was too fast, too much. Um, I'll need to tighten, tighten it up. So finer grind and maybe even more of a dose, increase my dose size as well. I didn't know as well, like when I was trying to dial this in because I'd been so rusty about uh, my espresso in this machine in particular, right? Every machine's a little different. You have to kind of like experiment and find out what's the right thing. And also the beans, like how fresh is it? Like what's the, what's the, um, um, the roast development on it? Uh, I was timing it from the moment I hit this button, which is incorrect. It was supposed to be from the moment the, uh, the espresso starts to pour and then you hit the timer, right? Um, so that was, a big mistake of mine of trying to dial this in. So a lot to kind of relearn. When I first got it, I was all about it, but that was kind of like two years ago. And then it's kind of just been sitting here and I've been uh, willy nilly about it and really just focusing on drinking nice black filter coffee through the AeroPress or through uh, pour over or something like that. So um, it's a great reminder on National Coffee Day to brush up on my espresso skills, in particular my Breville Barista espresso skills. I, I roasted for myself to start experimenting and to start like, to just start. I was a little bit, I was getting a little bit like um, intimidated about, well, I know that's a really great idea and it's something I really want to do to, um, develop my own espresso blend because I do love espresso just like this like that um, and occasionally like I said I'll be in the mood for some from uh, some kind of like cappuccino or a latte or something like that um, as the as the holidays start to kind of uh, kick in and stuff so I was like man I, sh I should do that <laughs> I want to I want to do that uh, but I was a little intimidated um, but um, as so many of you guys have been really like gracious with your compliments about following the journey of Black City Coffee and just sharing our journey here. And um, my motto on this channel is to inspire from real wins and losses. And I, that's what I want. I just want it to be real. And I had another loss in the coffee world and fail in that I wanted to, um, which I thought I had recorded this for you, the roasting of this roast. Uh, with the 360 camera because I thought it was so cool with the POV um, uh, sort of filming style. Um, but I, and, and during that video, I also was going to share a huge fail that, that had happened uh, within 
within our journey here and I wanted to share for, with you what our lessons were there but it kind of got like I kind of got demotivated to to share it and to talk about it maybe I will again someday when I uh kind of like gather my thoughts about it and because I lost the footage basically I had thought I recorded it lost the footage basically was never recorded you know I totally thought I hit the, the button and all that stuff I um, mean that just happens but when that happens I get really demotivated because uh I'm like oh, I recorded it and I shared so much and it was like I felt like I was you know real and off the cuff and stuff and I'm like I can't recreate that I'll just wait for another fail to happen <laughs> or wait for another opportunity to when I could bring it up but today is not about that fail today is about um saying that this particular fail about this barista um, little experimental roast and all this stuff um, is okay. You know, like um, when I first, I remember when I first started even roasting, so many of you guys are asking me about, hey, when you first started, you know, how did you feel or um, what was that like, blah, blah, blah. Like, when did you feel that you were ready for the next step? It's like, I don't know, it just felt... A lot of times you, if you're, if you're like me and you're sort of like, um, you, you need some sort of like ingredients to be uh, available to you before you can cook, you know what I mean? Um, if you're kind of like me, then that's, that's okay. You know, like if you feel that you need some sort of, you need, you need to have some certain ducks in a row in order for you to move forward. Um, yeah, that's okay. Like do that, do that, do what's right for you. Like, um, I think it's so great that I can be a part of. Uh, your journey or maybe inspire you to take certain steps or not right um i think that's really great and i uh, that's the beautiful thing about this this whole thing while i'm sad that this is not the shot that i want i'm just gonna try again i got the whole hopper filled let's try it again oh yeah look at that so a big reason that i was i was starting to research and everything why the uh um, bottomless portafilter was so important it was because and I don't know why I didn't actually learn this before when I started learning about this when I got this so long ago was that it allows you to see the extraction of the espresso in real time and then you can see all of your flaws or you can see all of your success without this in the way so I'll definitely want to pick that up but I, I, it looks like it's gonna cost me like 65 bucks on Amazon uh, for the one that they they especially make for this, but I'm definitely gonna do it. I'm definitely gonna get it I'm definitely gonna get all the tools to help me maximize this machine and get the best Espresso that I can out of it so that maybe perhaps somebody who who's buying black city coffee um, You know, I want to see I want to taste what they can hope to taste because a lot of people have this machine even like uh, Chris Baca has it um, a lot of uh, I've seen it throughout YouTube a lot so and I think a lot of our uh, clients have it too in our other business so I definitely want to be a good role model in terms of having this machine knowing how to use it and being able to advise um, customers and, and fans of Black City to to step up their game with their coffee so for sure I'm gonna do that um, it's just a matter of I guess timing we're kind of picking up a little bit here and um, October is gonna start soon on our uh, other business so I'm I'm kind of preoccupied with that you know um, so I'm glad that like I don't I don't have to feel rushed with Black City and uh, you guys are are also patiently waiting the the free samples and all that stuff so I love the pace that we've been taking together um, and it allows everything to sort of breathe and become what it's supposed to be in its own good time another thing I know which probably you guys can, uh, you know, you've, you've already pointed it out is like, Meg, why don't you measure out your dose on the scale? The thing is, I already put all the beans in here. <laughs> I was like doing this sort of like lazy approach to um, just kind of working out and dialing in this machine and stuff like that. Um, but the doser, I know is gonna help a lot. And I, I hate wasting coffee. I hate seeing it pour off the side like that. I think that's another reason why too. I was like, if I'm not the best at making espresso at home, and I know it takes work to, to do that, you know, to get the best espresso, espresso that you can get at home, um, 
I'm not the best at that. Like, it just wasn't motivating for me. But now that I, I feel like I have the camera, the camera always motivates me to document and do better because I know it can only get better. It's so weird that I'll have like a staler coffee, um, dark roasted, and be even finer than this and it'll be like fine. And this particular blend is weird so far in terms of dialing in. I spent all morning watching a bunch of dialing in uh, barista. Oh! A barista get it or at least competent not this mess that you're oh no what are we doing now and that's why so many people were telling me this machine is weird you must upgrade and then moves it around and then I, f I feel like it's uneven 47 seconds Jesus Stir. Mm. I quite like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. Now the finish becomes sour. Not there yet. Well, I don't have time to actually keep going. I actually have to go back to work with other things. So <laughs> my coffee break has long extended past the breaking time. So as you can see, I am riddled with uh, fails on this thing. And um, I think it'll make it all the more savory when I do nail it when I do nail this whole thing I'm I am going to get better tools to sort of like give myself the best shot of success uh, with pulling these shots and maybe even um, diagnosing what is actually the problem just like roasting with espresso espresso at home specifically because that's I think espresso at home and espresso in the cafe two different things okay so uh, espresso at home there's so many variables at which um, you can mess it up and so I really need to kind of like sit down with it Do a little bit be a little bit more studious and consistent and have a, a system of methodation if I how I could Do this better, but I think my first step will be is to get that um, uh, Bottomless portafilter basket so I can see the actual extraction taking place um, I have fresh coffee in the hopper um, just roasted a couple days ago, um, so I should be able to see and have that at least the the uh, bottomless portafilter basket to to help guide me, so that I can be better with espresso or specifically this machine. All right, and I will be producing some sort of blend. I don't know how soon we're gonna make it happen. It's all dependent upon. Um, whenever it tastes good. <laughs> when it tastes good. Right now, I'm like, okay, I can drink this, you know? It's a long shot, um, 47 seconds. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's drinkable, so I'm not gonna toss it because um, I hate wasting coffee um, unless it's, you know, terrible. So, um, we're gonna see. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching and uh, supporting the channel. Um, National Coffee Day. Go to the site. You should get a 25% off your order as a thank you for watching and watching this video and everything. Um, 
and uh, we'll leave that up there for a good 24 hours or so, okay? Because I kind of caught it late, so I get it. I'll, I'll leave it up for a good 24 hours starting now. Okay, all right. See you next time. Bye-bye.